This video has been sponsored by Solder Stick. More on that at the end. Hey, what's happening, guys? Today, we're going to play around a little bit with my old friend, your old friend, the NE555 chip. And what we're going to do is we're going to set it up in the A-stable mode, what I call my simple A-stable mode, where we're only going to use a potentiometer and a capacitor instead of the uh, resistor capacitor network. So, 555 timer, 8-pin chip, pin 1 is ground, pin 2 is trigger or threshold, one of the two, pin 3 is output, pin 4 is reset, pin 5 is control voltage, pin 6 is the opposite of pin 2, so if one is trigger, the other is threshold, pin 7 is discharge, and pin 8 is VCC. So, we'll bring some power in at pin 8. And we'll bring ground down here at pin 1. We'll go in. There we go. So we've handled our power. Next, I'm going to hook up a jumper wire from pin 3. And I'm just going to send it off here somewhere into oblivion. We'll get to that later. All right. Our reset, pin 4, needs to be held high for the chip to work. So we're going to take pin 4 and jumper it to pin 8. Because remember, pin 8 is connected to VCC. So reset is now held high. Now, in order to make this an A-stable multivibrator or a free-running oscillator, we simply need to connect our trigger to our threshold. Like that. Pin 6 connects to pin 2. Pin 4 connects to pin 8. See? Pretty simple. So now, all we need is timing. We've already set the chip up so that it is going to self-oscillate. We just need to tell it how fast. So we're going to use a potentiometer plugged in between pins seven or six, eight, seven, and six, just like that. And that is going to you, you see it is connected between. VCC uh, discharge and the threshold pin. That is going to control the charge and discharge rate of this capacitor on pin 2, which is the trigger pin, and it needs to be grounded, so we're going to go between pin 2 and pin 1. So now we have everything set up. Except what are we going to output? Well, in this case, we're going to output to a couple of LEDs. And I'm going to show you a little, um, little trick to this. So let's start with a red LED. And I'm just going to move our output down here so they're both on the, on the ground side. Anode goes to pin 3. Then we're going to use a 330 ohm resistor from the cathode to ground to limit the current going through there and then we will hook this up to a power supply you could even use a 9 volt battery I have it set for 5 volts we'll power it up and using a 2k potentiometer and a 1,000 microfarad capacitor, we're getting a blink rate of about 0.48 hertz. So, did you know that the 555 timer, which is currently sourcing current, can also sync it? So currently, we are sourcing current to the anode of this little LED. Now, if we switch this around,
input the cathode on the output of the chip and the resistor on the anode of the LED going to BCC we get the opposite blink rate still the same frequency but now it is sinking that current still with me all right now what we can do is we can both source and sink the current so now we're going to go output to the anode of this blue LED let me move my wire up here. And resistor to ground like we did in the, our first case. Like so. And if I hooked everything up right... One of them's working. Why isn't the other one working? One second. Ah. It is because my blind old man eyes plug the resistor into the wrong slot. Now it works. So now we have the 555 timer both sinking on the red LED and sourcing on the blue LED. So if you uh, do model cars or anything like that or any sort of model building, buildings where you would need an alternating set of lights, say railroad crossings, uh, emergency vehicles, what have you, there is a very simple way to do it that will cost you about, I don't know, two American dollars in parts. And the uh, 555 timer has a very wide voltage range, so you could, uh, you know, you could run it, I think, 5 volts to 16 volts, somewhere in that range, is it? So, it can easily be run off of LiPo batteries, no problem. Well, guys, that's all I have for you. I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give me a thumbs up. Feel free to comment, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Big thanks to all the patrons. If you're not yet a patron, please consider joining. A dollar a month is all we ask. Helps keep the channel going, pays the bills, that sort of thing. All right, guys, that's it. I'm out. Peace. Today's video is brought to you by Solder Stick. Solder Stick makes quick, waterproof wire connections that last a long time and protect whatever it is you're working on. They sell different types of connectors, everything from T-tap connectors, which allow you to put a splice into the middle of a wire without having to cut the wire or remove any insulation, waterproof uh, melt butt connector kits, Spade connector kits, which if you work on cars or boats, you know how useful they will be. And the same goes for ring connectors. When you need to connect a wire to something with a nut and a bolt, this is simply the way to do it. Solder stick. Remember them for all of your wire connection needs. There's a link down below for a discount.